In his honest, engaging, and revealing new memoir, entrepreneur Jeffrey Loria reflecting on the life of a Major League Baseball owner and modern art dealer. From the Front Row is available now. And Jeffrey Loria, former Marlins owner, owner, joins us in studio to discuss. Uh, why, why did you write the book? First of all, thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me, both of you. You got uh, it. I wrote the book because I guess I had the advantage of being an owner and an owner for more than two decades. And a good part of the book is about baseball, and the other part is my other career, which is as an yes. international art dealer. And uh, I had great opportunities to meet great players, great people, wonderful people, and be back be behind the scenes for all those years. Um, I was never a rah-rah guy on mm -hmm. the field or with my team, but I got to look and listen and spend a lot of time putting together a lot of thoughts, and I thought it would be a good idea for people to understand how the process works mm -hmm. and how the business works. Yeah. You know, 2015, I'm sitting on my couch, and, and he calls me and mm -hmm. says, I can tell the story, right? Sure, okay. sure. You say, hey, do you want to interview for the Marlins job? And you were honest. It was probably Don Mattingly's job to, to, to have. But I said, absolutely. I, and I met you in the city. And when I walked into your office, you had beautiful pieces of art all over the place. And I asked you that question. I, I didn't know that's how you had made your wealth and bought the team and everything. And you talk about how those two worlds can have some similarities Kind of take us inside that. Well, they both, they both are, are dictated pretty much by the word quality. Um, baseball players and artists, um, the ones that I work with are usually at the top of the, top of the ladder. Yeah. And um, I remember when I was a, a kid, I walked into Yankee Stadium with my father for the first time that green field oasis in the South Bronx. Same thing. Not, well, the experience never left me and I felt that it was magical. And what I saw, I could never have imagined. And it was the same thing for, for my art world. First time I walked into the studio of, a, of an artist. It was a great, great European sculptor. And I couldn't believe what I was seeing and here I was you know, still rather young in my early 20s. But they, they both, they both um, deal with quality players, artists, and that's what I've spent my career doing. And there's a lot of mystery in both worlds. Yeah. And uh, that's what intrigues me. It's not only the mystery, but it's also the, the people and putting people together and, and making something positive come out of it. What do you make of the new rule changes in yeah. 2023? You like them. Um, I actually like them yeah. all. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, the commissioner has done an unbelievable job in putting all this together and making it work. I mean, you can change rules, right. but if they don't work, what good is it? Mm -hmm. And, I mean, the pitch clock was now takes, what, 30 minutes off a game? Yep. But you spend more time watching the game now yours there's a little more intensity there you're completely engaged you feel like you're uh, missing stuff now yeah i mean at night when i and i still watch baseball all the time i watched the late night dodger twins game last night i didn't want to get up to go get a glass of water because i thought i was going to miss something do you miss it do you miss uh, the day-to-day -day? um i miss i miss the day-to-day -day. yeah i miss obviously the camaraderie but i also miss the the ability to um, uh, see people developing, young players developing, um, helping young executives. I, I never made it a show about myself. I always made it about everybody around me. And watching them grow was terrific. I mean, when I reached out to you, you were just off the field. Yeah. And I recognized, you know, who you were and and forget that you went to the University of Pennsylvania and were a quarterback and were, <laughs> and were pretty good and <laughs> killed my team up in, in New Haven from you time to time. You always made it a point. Even when I put, was young with yeah. the Marlins, you'd come around and say hello all the time. Well, I, was... I, I just try to keep things light with everybody. I never, I never was a manager or a coach or a trainer or a hitting coach or anybody. I like anything like that. But 
I try to encourage everybody, and I think for the most part, when I left, people understood that, and we had a we had good teams. We just missed at the end before I sold the team. Yeah. And you remember what happened then, that awful tragedy with Jose. But it was, it was always about making things better for everybody else. There was a, there, there's a whole chapter, if I'm not mistaken, about Jose in, in the book, right? Yeah, there is a chapter. He, he, um, How often do you still think about him? I think about him a lot. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he was very special. I never met any young man like him in my life who came here from nothing. Right. And his, the story, his story I summarize in one chapter, and, and it finishes up with me standing next to Barry Bonds at his funeral. Yeah. And um, I mean, he, he had it all. It was an unfortunate thing that happened, but right. when Jose walked into a room, he commanded everything, that your attention... I remember when he walked into the manager's office one day, went right over to the refrigerator, took out a beer, <laughs> and everybody was sitting there. And I said to him, Jose, what are you doing? He said, oh, his beer is colder than the beer outside. <laughs> and you throw like him. Yeah, yeah, do yeah. Those things. And everybody, everybody was angry, and I said, leave him alone. Let the personality develop. Let him keep growing that way. And he did. You it mentioned was, you, you, you were watching Dodgers Twins last yeah. night, that you watch baseball still frequently. What teams or, or players have, have jumped out at you uh, so far this season? Well, I, I think some of the teams that are not in first place right now will probably be right there at the end. Yeah. I mean, so... F uh, Cardinals, uh, Yanks. Yankees. Well, the Cardinals are definitely not going to finish the season in last or next to last yeah. place. And the Yankees, you know, it's a function of injuries and it's a function of... of um, uh, how strong your pitching is, and if your pitching is down at the moment, then you've got to get it back. Doesn't mean you have to make a trade and sacrifice your organization. You just have to be patient, because baseball season is long. It seems like it takes forever to get through those six months. How do you, do you make the, the decision, does someone come to you and say, hey, let's put a book together? Or were you, how long does this process take? I mean, that's thick. Yeah, but there's a lot. There's a there, there's a lot in it. You know, it's it's about um, players. It's about it starts off with the World Series in Yankee Stadium in 03. 03, Josh Beckett. Me sitting yeah. there. Most people don't know that I thought Josh was so nervous that day. The last day he was. The Jack decided to pitch him on the short rest. Short rest. Nobody does that. But McKeon says <laughs> we're going to do this because there ain't going to be no game seven. <laughs> I remember it. And, and he was afraid. I took Josh, called Josh one day, one, one early that morning and said, you and I are going out to buy some clothes. I wanted to get his mind off the game. And he, oh. and, he and I went to Barney's and bought shirts. <laughs> Every one of his shirts that he bought looked like they were made in Texas. <laughs> He's still like that. I run into him I, all the time. This is the most it. honest young man I have ever met. When you look at this... Uh, what what comes to mind? What feelings come to you? When I see a baseball game? Oh, the, that's the World Series? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. I remember sitting in Yankee Stadium thinking about it in the seventh or eighth inning next to my security guard. Mm -hmm. guard. And he, uh, I looked across the field, and I saw where I used to come as a kid at yeah. the Yankee Stadium. Full circle. Yeah. And I said, my dad would love to be here. He wasn't alive at the moment. And then... And um, my security guard says, you got to stop this. And he gave me a whack in the stomach. He said, you're about to win the World Series. Yeah, enjoy the moment. Think about that crap later. <laughs> <laughs> Where can people buy the book? Um, it's on Amazon and bookstores. It's, uh, it's an, it's an, I try to make it a really good and easy read for people. And um, I think I succeeded. Well, congratulations to the new book. It's called From the Front Row, Reflections of a Major League Baseball Owner and Modern Art Dealer. Jeffrey Loria is the author, former Marlins owner. Thank you very much for coming in studio. Good Thank luck you. with the book. Thank you. Thank you both for having me. You got it. You got it.